Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I'm your co-host, TMD. We want to thank our main sponsor for this evening. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment, located out of Van Nuys, California. If you want to find out everything Knox Pro, you want to train with the best, then log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Big Keish, welcome back. Hey. How are you feeling? Man, I'm good, Joey. It's good to see you, man. It's, it's always been, good to see you, sir. It's been a minute, man. I'm exhausted. You have been, uh, as always, a man on the move. Uh, so much stuff has gone on since the last time we shot. Where well, there's been so much stuff between SummerSlam, the SummerSlam viewing party we did, your family reunion, yeah, um, and then of, of course um, we are we are now here. Um, and of course, the pro wrestling world knows. And um, you know, again, my condolences to you, your entire family. The wrestling world for the loss of your uncle, Afa, and um, I Thank just um, I just want to know what, uh, what, what's on your mind. No, well, it's uh, you know it was good to see family. Uh, you know the, our first reunion within a long time. You know our busy schedules, and to be able to go back to the Bay Area, you know where we all started at it was a uh, uh, it was a sweet thing to be able to experience not only with my kids but also you know, my grandkids, and to be able to meet a lot of the new nieces and nephews and, you know, to see the siblings of the Anoa'i, you know, bloodline. And, uh, you know, and then to to, to have a, a a wonderful, my first viewing party, thanks to you and the crew out there. That was awesome. You know, SummerSlam, it, it was great. You know, it was uh, uh, the first time I ever did a, a pay-per-view party up there. And, uh, you know, I, I want to thank all the fans for turning up and, you uh, turning out we had a blast out there and you know i look forward to doing more of the pay-per-views as we were talking you know on our way here you know why not come back home to be able to just that'll be the only place you see kishi host the pay-per-view party for wwe drop 84 yeah would be there at drop 84 mm -hmm. out of berkeley so mm -hmm. it was uh you know it's a uh, uh i i feel it's it's a good thing to be able to have a uh, the hometown kid, you know, from the Bay Area to come and, you know, shed some stories over there while enjoying a meet and greet and enjoying some good food at Drop 84 with the fans. And I, I love the vibe there. The vibe, it's like you're just sitting in your living room and just a bunch of family members just hanging around and, you know, uh, uh, just having a great time enjoying wrestling. And so, you know, big shout out to the crew out there at uh, Drop 84. So, um and, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, we all know about, uh, you know, my uncle Alpha, you know, as, um, it was, uh, this one here was, uh, a big blow back to back for our family. Uh, we lost uncle Sika a few months ago and then, uh, uh, to be able to lose uncle Alpha, it's, uh, you know, nobody, we're still mourning, you know, I, I, you know, I got this news right after we left from the reunion and, uh. You know, I, it, my my body's numb right now. My mind's numb, and uh, you know we lost uh, the fathers of this dynasty that started it all for for us. That would you know given us an opportunity to to live the life that we live today, and and it goes on. So, you know, I'm I'm still numb, Joey. Uh, to be honest, to the world, uh, you know, I I you know I see all your posts. I see all their you know, their treats and, and their messages and, you know, that has been sending towards myself and my family. And, uh, you know, we want to say thank you. You know, the the power of love, uh, the power of healing uh, towards our family, it's, uh, it's overwhelming from millions and millions of fans throughout the world and, and, you know, close friends and families and so forth. So I want to thank you all. Thank you and the crew as well. You know, you guys were the first ones that... Uh, uh, pretty much hit my my number, and uh, you know, just encourage you know uh, the condolences of uh, another lost, another big blow in our family. So we're we're still healing. You know, it's going to for me. It's going to take some time. Um, you know, because uh, you know, at the end of the day, I know what they want us to do or would want me to do is to keep pushing forward. Absolutely. You know, I, I got a responsibility now between you know myself and Big Sam. You know, offers a uh, oldest son you know we're the 
uh, and uh, Reno and Hawaii were the were the oldest in the bloodline now, and Rocky and and uh, so there, there's gonna a lot there's gonna be a lot of you know responsibility as far as uh, you know helping advice. You know all the family members that are in the industry, um, they are already prepped for it. You know they know what to do and so forth. The legacy. Uh, needs to and must carry on in a respectful manner. Um, you know, the industry was uh, my uncle's heart and soul. They loved this industry. You know, all the way from Peter, High Chief Peter Maivia, to often seek of the, the fathers of this uh, bloodline dynasty. And so it's up to us that are you're still here on this earth uh, to continue to carry on responsibility with with utmost uh, respect and dignity and uh, to be able to, you know, each one teach one because at the end of the day, you know, we still have younger, you know, nephews and uh, possibly more nieces that might want to, you know, join into this industry of professional wrestling. At the end of the day, it's uh, we need to continue to support each other and as we always have uh, through this industry. So I want to, uh, personally thank the world thank you thank you thank you uh on behalf of myself and the whole and Samoan dynasty uh family uh for all your love and your wishes and your condolences to, to me and my family for the losing of our father's uh uh uncle alpha and uh, a couple of months ago uncle Sika. so thank you were you surprised at all by the amount of of, of uh, support that you and the family received from not only just family and friends, but the wrestling world? Um, like, no, no, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you real wrestling fans and we've gained new wrestling fans through the bloodline mm -hmm. uh, of today. You know, they, they realize how much our family has put into this industry. You know, I talk about it 75 plus years. Uh, there's no way you can erase that whether it be professional wrestling or any other business, mm -hmm. when you have a family that has dedicated, you know, their heart and soul and life uh, to our industry that has given us an opportunity, then you come in here and you conquer it. You know, it's all glory to, you know, to God to be able to give us the strength and the passion, you know, to move forward. Uh, and also, you know, from just who we are as Samoans, as Polynesians, and just our culture, our faith. I mean, I mentioned this. This has a big part to do with our success. And so the fans are not stupid. The fans are never stupid. If you feel that the fans know, uh, uh, that we know more than the fans, then you better look yourself in the mirrors because, you know, fans today, they're all smart. They're all respected, you know, as they should. Uh, for paying their hard-earned money mm -hmm. to come and watch you perform to do the things you love. So, you know, the Samoan dynasty is forever branded. It will be forever branded past, present, and the future. So to answer your question, no, I wasn't. Um, so uh, we're going to tap in a little bit more. I got a few more questions uh, about your own offer, but uh, we're going to take a, a call right now. We got Alyssa calling in right now. Alyssa, hey, how you doing? You're on with Rikishi Fatu on Off the Top Podcast. What is your question and where are you from? Hello, I am from Pennsylvania. Hello. And my question is, well, first and foremost, is my apologies for you guys as well. But then, you know, just past week and last month, my apologies to your loss. Thank you. My question is for how's Jimmy? Um, uh, what? Uh, thank you, Alyssa. Appreciate you calling through. Uh, Jimmy's doing fine. Um, I think at any given moment, uh, uh, hopefully that Jimmy will be ready to come back uh, to be able to, you know, do what he loves. I'm sure he misses the fans, and I'm sure you all miss uh, Jimmy. So. Um, he, he's doing great. You know, he's got some time to, you know, to be able to, you know, uh, rest the body, rest the mind, and uh, he, he's ready to go. So hopefully we're able to see Jimmy soon. Okay? 
Yeah, they miss Jimmy, bro. They do. I was just gonna say. I, um, and, and, and my whole feed is not. But where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? Like that. That, yeah. that, that is that is good. And, and imagine, you know, the year he had. You know, he's sixteen that years. But the, 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 the man, the last few three years, the year, the last three years, yeah. the bloodline has been on top, no questions asked. And what that does to uh, the body, the mind, the yeah. soul. Like you need that time to re uh, rehabilitate yourself, right? Recharge, right? Mentally, physically, you know what I mean. Let's Just talk about the science, sir, because I don't uh, think people understand what the toll it takes on the human body to perform every night. Different cities, different towns. It doesn't matter if you're sick. It doesn't matter if you got a birthday this coming weekend, Christmas, no. and nothing. Like you have to perform. So he's had some time off. Um, when he comes well, back, I have a feeling we're going to see a super stronger and better Jimmy Uso. Well, he's recharged, Joey. Yes, sir. I mean, to be able to, let's let's even go further than four years. Let's just put it all together. 17 years, these boys have been in there. 17 years, nonstop, you know, 200-something days out the year. Of course, within 17 years, there's injuries. But, you know, we're, we're taught to keep going. And so... For him and his brother, uh, Jay, they've been uh, dominating tag team, you know, competition for a minute. And this is the beautiful thing about tag team is that when one is hurt, the other can do most of the work just to get by. And so for him to uh, finally kind of get a break and, uh, you know, kind of just uh, sit back and, and recharge a a lot of the broken bones and, you know, do a lot of therapy, whether you need it or not, you know, get, you know, daily massages, you know, just shut down everything, shut down media, shut down personal appearances, shut down taking bumps in the ring, shut down traveling, shut down the stress to be able to get there, shut everything down and just to be able to look in your living room and look what, what's more, what's most important in your life your family and your kids. I mean, that does a body and a mind tremendously, tremendously good. Like it just makes you like, you know, it, it recharges your mind, your body and your soul. But then keep in mind, you know, he's been out, I, I guess, what, a couple months if that, or maybe more. I've, Since WrestleMania. But, okay, so yeah. if you've been off there, I, I can imagine he's itching to get back too. Because when you've been when you've been grinding so long, mm -hmm. you come back home and it's like a normal life now. Wait a minute, I don't have to get up early to catch a flight. Wait a minute, I can eat dinner at seven o'clock with my family, and put my kids to bed or be there to read a book or watch a movie with them on a weekend. I don't have to go. Man, it, sometimes it you know it, it it fills your spirit up and and it makes your mind like okay, what's the next move? Like, because you like that feeling. You like to see what you're seeing. Like, all your hard work is the fruits of your labor. Like, it's really taking care of your loved ones, giving them an opportunity, an opportunity in this world that we live in today of 2024. The opportunities today was not like opportunities back then. Opportunities today is a whole different type of, of, of vibe. So... Yes, I'm sure that he's happy to take time off, but I'm sure being a, just speaking from a wrestler, mm -hmm. man, we don't know how to sit home, man. We we all we know is to get out there and grind, be it in professional wrestling or our own business. You know, there's always that thought: how could we make it better? Mm -hmm. Like we we talk about the podcast, yes, sir, for 2025. I want to move this podcast, you know, into uh, different spots. You know, be be uh, different uh, uh, venues out there in the country or overseas. You don't have any other yeah. gear. Your gear is just go, go and work, produce solutions, no problems. Yeah. Just go, go, go. But you know grind, what, Joey? Grind, grind. That can be good too. Yes, sir. But it, it also good. could be bad because, you know, I realized like, you know, for years that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. But I realized, you know, just a little me time and I'm going to put it out there that I need to slow down. You know, every week, like, you know, even though I haven't been with WWE in 25 years. You're running that same years, schedule. I run that same schedule. Mm -hmm. and But the only beautiful thing about my schedule, 
My schedule is my schedule. You call the shots, yeah. I call the shots. Mm-hmm. I call everything, and mm-hmm. it feels good to be, you know, uh, 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 that freedom to be able to call my own shots to go where I, I want to go and, and whether I want to take the booking or not, if they don't come correct, I, I don't need it. You know, I think I've earned that right uh, to be able to, you know, hold my cards that way. Yes, sir. And so, but I realize, you know, how much money can you make, man? When is enough enough? Like, because when we all die, Joey, yep. I, I can't take all this stuff with me to the, you know, to, to heaven where we going. Your relatives are going to sell it on you know? eBay. Yeah. It, well, hopefully the next person can make money off <laughs> yes, of it. Yes, sir, exactly. But at the end of the day, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, you know, you know, I need to slow down, and I, I don't know if others out there has kind of got to that point in their life to where, you know, kind of slow down and enjoy the fruits of your labor. You know, just enjoy some quality time now to uh, to relax with your loved ones and just enjoy life, you know. Smell the roses. Yeah. Just, yes, sir. I mean, how much do you work? That's my question. Yep. How much do you work? Is I Because I know professional wrestling. That's all we do. Our grind is on independent circuit. When you when you're not doing that, you're in uh, looking for, a, you know, a comic con. You're looking for uh, fairgrounds. You're looking for a bar. You're looking for anywhere you can go in there and sell your merchandise to make a few dollars. Mm-hmm. The life of a wrestler, you know. And so when you like, I don't know, 37 years of my life doing this, man. Started 17, turned pro at 19, and that's all I know. The hustle of professional wrestling has made me the man who I am today. And it's rubbed off on your students, too, on some of your students. I hope so. I can speak for me personally. Then I'm proud of you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, you know? Just take it on the smallest tasks. You got to uh, practice the six Ps. Because this is not a game, right, Joe? No, I mean, sir. We no, hurt. No, sir. This we hurt. I mean, a game. Uh, you know, when we get into the ring, you know, some rings are good. Some rings are just made cheap. The plywoods are busted in the middle. And this is just one gig that we're <laughs> coming through. And God forbid you get in there and you sprain your ankle or bust your knee because you stepped in the wrong plywood. Yeah. Promoters don't care, Right. You think they're going to pay for your emergency, you know, surgery? Right, right. No, no. No. That comes under you. And if you don't no. take care of the domino effect, now here goes your credit, the domino effect of this. This is why it's so, so important that you learn all the ins and outs of the ring, the professional wrestling industry. Like, Joey, I'm not going to get in there. And I teach you guys, first thing you get in there, you walk around that ring. Fill the ring out. Fill the ring out, mm-hmm. Joey. Mm-hmm. Make sure, like, okay, if there's a hole here, damn it, we are staying away from this yes, corner sir. here. Mm-hmm. If this is where, you know, this got a hole here, well, we don't need to do that spot what I usually do. Fill out the crowd. Is this the type of crowd that we need to go haywire for doing crazy spots? Or can we just get away from just... You know, just working the crowd, doing just easy spots. Yes, sir. Yay, boo, yay, boo. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go home. Mm-hmm. Right? So you got to have that type of smart stuff. The name of the game is survival in this industry, in and out the ring. You know, what you make on the road, it's like, you know, it's what you make is what you save. Because you're not trying to spend that out there on the yep. road. Yep. You're trying to bring it back home to the nest. You got birds in the nest. Their mouths is wide open. Them birds' mouth mm-hmm. is wide open, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you you know, you about ready to get married, too, and <laughs> you're going to have you a little Joey. Yeah, that's you know? right. That's right. And he, these these uh, advice is going to carry you, man. Yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. And uh, so much advice that I've learned from you, Reno and David, has carried on to my outside life, out of the ring. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's uh, helped me immensely get to where I'm at today. Yeah. Um, so, yes, there's that. Uh, we have another caller. We've got David on the line. Yo, David, please uh, state where you're from and your question. You are on with Rikishi Fatu on Off the Top Podcast. Yeah, uh, I'm from Sacramento. Um, first off, I, I got to send my condolences to you and your family, Big Quiche. Um, thank you. Thank you. Sorry for another loss. Um, I'm, I'm relating. I just had a funeral on Friday myself. So, you know, tough times. Um, yep. On a positive note, I do want to say I'm loving the music. 
you just keep dropping banger after banger. Man. <laughs> uh, that's that West Coast vibe. Um, exactly, exactly. The question, um, it, similar to the last question in regards to Jimmy, um, I know Jay, he, he's, he's gotten mega over with the heat. Yeah. Um, but, and I know they'll come back at some point as the Usos. But for him to do his own thing, you know, I, I, I have all the respect in the world for the Samoan dynasty. And y'all have your own signatures in regards to y'all got the spike, you got the Samoan drop, you got the super kick, things yeah. that are like staples to like the Samoan style. But my question is to stand out, do you think maybe Jimmy might need to, need to flip the script a little bit? And because even Roman, he has his own signatures that make, make him stand out. Same, same with, the, um, with Jacob. But, like, do you think Jimmy needs something in regards to in the ring to make him stand out a little different from what we see with everybody? Uh, okay, well, well, thank you for your uh, uh, for your question, my man. Um, you know, I, I feel in due time, Jimmy, you know, he, he'll find Jimmy. Uh, you know, it, it took uh, Jay to break off in a single to really kind of just, you know, kind of just fall into... Uh, the character and the, you know, his his uh, 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 former style of, of of working, as far as the brand of Yi, and I think you know uh, me knowing my boys, you know the twins personally, they're both they both got attitudes, man. You know, it just so happened that Jimmy took off, and you know he's doing his thing. I mean, uh, uh, Jay took off, and he's doing his thing. And uh, when the time uh, Jimmy does come back, I, I, I'm very confident it's not going to take long, you know, be it he comes back as a single or uh, they decide to, to put him and, and Jay together to be able to join Roman, which I probably think that would probably be the, the route to go. Uh, but if in case they uh, just decide to come back as a, as a single for Jimmy, uh, I think that, you know, it, it won't take long for Jimmy to find himself uh, to be able to, you know, come up with his own deal. And, you know, he's very, very uh, talented. Uh, he's smart. Uh, he's athletic. Uh, so I, I, I don't I don't think it's going to be a problem for him to find his way. But thank you, man. I appreciate it. Sacktown's in the house. Thank That's you. right. Sacktown. Yes, sir. That's the Mac Town. So um, we're going to talk about some current, uh, current events, but I'm going to circle back uh, uh, with a few questions uh, regarding uh, your Uncle Afa. What is a memory that comes to your mind that makes you smile about your Uncle Afa, like, right away? <laughs> I think I mentioned getting slapped in the gorilla position. <laughs> we all know that story. Yeah. You wanna, let's let's uh, go over mean, again. My goodness, yeah. Uh, you know, we're just having a debut, me and Samu. Uh, we coming through gorilla position, the famous girl. I was already nervous coming through the damn gorilla position. And then it come there to see Vince McMahon and the whole crew sit there. And, you know, my Uncle Alpha, he has a long relationship with the McMahon family. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, we hear the music. We don't know what type of music. It just sounds like some jungle head shrinker music we know today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, before we got about ready to come out the curtain, he held us back. And when he held us back, he just turned around. I thought he was going to say something to us. <laughs> and he just looked at us and slapped the <laughs> out of both of us. <laughs> and, and that was it. That, that, that slap, They call that sasa, right? Uh, yeah, sasa. <laughs> sasa lo moku. That means slap your, your mouth. Anyhow, so we go out there. And now, keep in mind, I'm going out, and then my jaw is still, you know, <laughs> it's sore. It was a hard, you know, you know how you catch that palm the palm part of your hand, oh, not, not the not. fingers. Oh, no. So with the palm part of your hand, and he already had like 20-inch arms, you know, 23-inch <laughs> arms. Like, So I felt every bit of that, oh. that Samoan drop slap. Did he slap Samu yeah. also? Yeah. <laughs> we both caught. If he didn't slap Samu, I would have said, well, why you slap me? And I slapped his son. <laughs> but anyhow, that was his way of psyching us up, man. We wow. went out there, Joey, and... You know, we we work like what we work. You know what I mean? It, 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 I think it was fifteen or twenty thousand people, and it didn't phase us, man. It was like we was in the you know back in the backyard of Uncle Sika's place, and it's just us, you know, working against some students. And it it didn't. I thought I was gonna get goosebumps mm -hmm. being out there, you know. And and you, you look around, it's like, you know, that's when I knew we was made for this industry. And dude, we came back and uh, right off the back. 
you know, we got a contract, you know, offered. They signed us up for a three-year deal, and the domino effect came home. The family, the twins, everybody, yep. hey, time to eat, you know, time to eat. But, yeah, I'll never forget that, man. I got slapped, slapped so damn hard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. yeah uh, you, that's you, one of it. You mentioned uh, your uncle Alpha had a, a close relationship with the, the, yeah. the McMahon family. So, out of Alpha and Sika, would you say that it was Alpha who was more close with Vince McMahon? Did he have the better relationship out of the two? Well, Alpha did in most of the business. Okay, you know, Uncle Sika, Uncle Sika's just easy going, man. I used to call Uncle Bob Marley. I was just going to say, did you Alpha partake I mean? in the Devil's uh, Lettuce too? Nah, sometimes. You oh, know okay, what I mean? sometimes. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. But uh, yeah, but you know, he did when 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 we were all off, okay. Uh huh. But when it came time to business, you know, it was always like, you know, Vince would talk to Alpha. Okay. Because Alpha would be the one that to kind of break the, you know, he would do all the business parts for the for the family and and so forth. Uh, but Uncle Sika, he was like the, the both are the muscle, but Uncle Sika was built like. If you mess with the family, uh-huh. we got, I'm I'm going to be the one you're going to deal with. Wow. And okay. so he was that. But, you know, the, you can imagine the way they mm-hmm. both look, mm-hmm. right? Back yep. in the day, if you mm-hmm. don't know them, like, they're very intimidating, mm-hmm. you know? And so you damn sure didn't want to mess with none of them, like, back in the day. So it was that, you know? But if you really knew my uncles, mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. if you when they love... They love hard. Yes, sir. All you guys do. They love hard. All you guys well, do. Well, when it's time to turn the gimmick on, mm-hmm. oh, man. Uh-huh. You, you, you think the damn Wolverine looking at you when you're looking at Uncle Sika, boy. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? It sliced you up, uh-huh, man. Uh-huh. But, yeah, it, it, it was uh, Uncle, Uncle Alpha. I'd have to say it was the business part of the Wild Samoan. So pretty much for the whole family. Did your Uncle Alpha have anybody, besides his brother Sika, was, did he have, like, a, a, a road dog, a buddy? Like, who was, like, one of his best friends in the business besides his brother? Was it Irene Sheik, maybe? Because there's that famous photo of your uh, yeah. Uncle Alpha and Sika, Irene Sheik, and Captain Lou Albano in that park. Yeah. And to me, that is that is a, a, one of the best wrestling pictures I've ever seen because it, it, it's just a bunch of the boys hanging out, barbecuing, getting their tans on. Yeah. Um, was there anybody he was really close with it? in the business that wasn't his brother? Well, you know what? I can only speak on what I see at the house. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I mean, like I mentioned this in 2 Dublin Street in California, San Francisco, where they would all come to the house and have barbecues. You know, Kamala was there. I mean, Sheik was there. Uh, Dick Murdoch was wow. there. Uh, you know, uh, Rocky Johnson, okay. you know, Tony Atlas, those crew. But when I came up to uh, Hamden, Connecticut, a lot of times I seen Jules Strongbow uh, was there. You know, he used to be there with Uncle Alpha, and he would be, you know, sometimes he would train us back in the backyard there. And, you know, again, it was one of those repeat type of systems. Like, you know, when the boys would wrestle close by, you know, Iron Sheik was, Iron Sheik was with Uncle a lot. I think because, you know, we smoked a lot of weed or something. <laughs> we we all used to be, you know, ganja out and just, you know, Bob Marley out. And you never seen a lot of them angry. They was always so happy, you know. So it was a lot of barbecuing, a lot of laughs, and, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, back in the day, they used to always uh, wear them damn, like, not G-strings, but almost like, you know, uh, Speedos. Uh-huh. Wrestlers used to wear Speedos or wherever <laughs> swimming pool we go to. <laughs> You see a big ass, you know, like Boris Zukov. Oh Remember my the, yeah, yeah, you know the Bolsheviks, mean? the, the Kolovs, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So they would all come out, you know, and uh, you know, wear those speedos and just lay out in the pool, and, and that's what they did. You know, they all come out to get their tan on, and because yep. I never seen my uncles wear speedos, they always came out with lava lavas, lavas and stuff. And then before you know it, that's where lava lava starts with a lot of the boys. Yep. Because uh, a lot of them, if we like you, mm-hmm. uh, that's our sign of friendship. We used to give you a lava lava. So okay. we still do that to this day, yep. you know, in the dressing room. I know. If you see BSK, Kavika backstage, Kavika has he wears his a lava lava. lava. Yep. yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think my mom gave Kavika his first lava lava yep. when yep. she came. Yep. If you ever see him but, backstage, yeah. he's, he dresses that way. You don't see him when he drops his underwear. You don't see balls. And always, stuff. Yep. always mm-hmm. lava lava. Yes, yeah, you know, even BSK, you know, we bless BSK, Yoko bless. BSK, I did. We went a lot of lava lava. So, you know, that was that was our thing. So, you know, Uncle was uh he, he didn't really the boys was his road dog. Yes, sir. The boys were he was just so man, I, I realized 
how much my uncles had a big part uh, in this industry of professional wrestling, even with WWF, mm -hmm. the beginning of WWF, you know, uh, and how much all the boys and uh, the talent, even the staff, loved them. Man, I got texts and calls from, you know, people that I haven't talked to but were my uncle's friends back in the day and were working for WWE. And, you know, the power yeah. that, you know, my uncles have to be able to have these people reach out, you know, and send their condolences, you know. So I'm, I'm happy, you know, they both are not suffering. Uh, I'm also excited for the journey ahead, the journey ahead for the, the bloodline, you know, the dynasty, uh, to see where this... Uh, uh, this goes and how far does it go? Does it go another 75 plus years? You know, how long it's, it's, it's up to us to take it as long as we want. Yes, sir. So, um, we got, uh, one more caller, yep, uh, let's but, do it. but before we get to that caller, uh, I want to wrap it up with your, your uncle Afa and then we're going to get to some current events here. Um, what do you think Afa, what do you think his, um, his legacy is going to be? <sighs> Uh, a loving, a loving brother, an amazing son, probably the best father that his, their kids, his kids can ever, ever ask for. And they all know it. A man who loved his family. When I say family, I mean family abroad, siblings, nephews, nieces, you know, the whole, the whole Anuai Fatu clan. A man that loves his culture, had pride to represent with the utmost respect to the whole world. A man that loved the industry, that loved the students of the game. A man that wanted everybody in the game to understand how beautiful professional wrestling is. A man that has given his life to the industry, him and his brother, well over 75 plus years. A man that lived a full life of this sports entertainment business and has given his everything to it. A man that opened up opportunity for the present dynasty bloodline moving forward to give an opportunity for the future a man that opened the door up for us to have a good life to what we have today in this family a man that will be missed by so many touch the hearts of diversity diverse kids throughout the world that love this industry a man that's full of knowledge that understands what it is in and, in and out of the squared circle. A man that's not selfish. A man that loves everyone. A man that would give the shirt off his back for a person that is homeless that need food. A man that just truly, truly loves humanity. That, with the help of God that instilled in this man, my Uncle Alpha, that's what I sum up of who my uncle is. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Just thank you for you being you and teaching us the way. Rest in peace, Uncle Alpha. Yes, sir. All right, Ben. You are on live with WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi Fatu on the Off the Top podcast. Please state where you're from and your question. I'm from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Shout out to Ireland. And my, and my question is, why is your favorite match you are in? Can you please repeat that question? Why is your favorite match you were in? What is the my favorite match? Okay. Well, uh, well, first of all, shout out to Ireland. 
Um, man, this I I that's a difficult one. You've Jerry. had so many. Yeah, I mean, how do you narrow down? You know what I mean. A lot of those 30. great matches were with Bret Hart. <laughs> yeah, of course you would say Bret. Right. <laughs> the best there is, the best there was. Right? The best there ever will by be. The way, by the way, Joey's a big fan of Bret Hart. <laughs> Man, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to say my one of my favorite matches had to be the Hell in a Cell. Sir, yeah, course, I yeah. say this all the time when in this industry because my 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 looks on it is different. To why it's personal to me because. In this industry, you kind of wait to be able to get an opportunity to work with the best in the mm-hmm, business, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, when you're working with uh, the crew uh, that I've worked with on that that day at the Hell in the Cell, I mean, th- these were billion dollar, billion dollar ta- uh, uh, roster inside one ring. Triple H, The Rock, The Undertaker, Kurt Angle, mm-hmm. Jesus, So you. Cold, Steve Austin. <laughs> Right. And uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, that mess had to be one of the, you know, one of my favorites, you know, and, you know, to be able to be amongst a, a bunch of great talent like that. You know, I, I took the opportunity and ran with it because, you know, you know, in this industry, you never know when you get that, you know, you might not ever get that type of booking again. And so when that happened, man, it's like, man, I'm going to go out there and let's do the best, the best we can out there and, have fun. However it comes out, you know, it comes out the way it is. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some footage that's going to be, what, it's been 25-something-plus years, Joey, they yes. still show it. What's crazy is you say, let's go out and have some fun, but you literally put your life on the line that night. Like, you could have died. Yeah. You could have died. But that's what's crazy to me. That's, that's what, what we do, though, right? I was just going to say, that's what wrestlers right. do, We, man. we, we don't even look at No. Do we even look at, like, how dangerous it, it is? Because to us, no matter how high, how low, a bump is a bump. Yep. It's how you go back to your fundamentals. How yeah. am I going to break this bump? Right? And so, yeah. So, big shout out to Ireland, man. I, yeah. I will see y'all in September. <laughs> I'll be up there for the... Oh, snap. Yeah, I'll be up there for the uh, Comic-Con out there. One of the biggest Comic-Cons out there. Okay. Ireland going to have me some Ireland beer. I was just going to say. Well, we'll kind of some good work. beer out there. All right. Okay. So uh, thank you, uh, Ben, all the yeah. way from Ireland. So uh, we're going to wrap up this uh, episode with uh, some current events here. Let's talk about SmackDown this past week. Okay. Roman Reigns, the GOAT, uh, the uh, as, as some would say right now. Uh, wow. <laughs> The pop he got when he made his return at SummerSlam, yeah. but the pop he got this uh, SmackDown he made, and please help me because um, I've heard the word, but what, what, what's the necklace called? The Ula Fala. The Ula Fala. So yeah, when he put that go. on, it, yeah, we got that. We got it, the Ula Fala right it, there. We can zoom. We can zoom it, in right, it, right over <laughs> there. Yeah, Keith got one. <laughs> Um, he puts it on, and he man, he put that over big. Uh, Roman Reigns is definitely one of the greatest right now at the money, the facial. He's definitely man. Yeah. He's he's in the pocket with that. Turns yeah. around, and then what happens? Taken out by the Samoan werewolf Jacob Fatu. Yeah. My question to you right now, Big Key. Don't you just mind your own business, Jacob? <laughs> Jeez. You don't have to take your cousin's pop away. My goodness. Let him let him get a let little him bit soak in. It in. Exactly, I mean, exactly, man. My goodness, he's been gone since WrestleMania. He man. cut him off short like John Wayne Bobby. <laughs> Jesus, Jacob. Oh man, but, smart, uh, smart enough, smart enough. My question to you, Big Keish, after I saw that yeah. was: so with Roman Reigns making his return, yeah. Who do you think he has his eyes set on now? Because Jacob Fatu took him out. Uh, no one's been able to take Roman and Reigns out like that in a long time. Mm-hmm. Solo is 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 the new uh, tribal chief. So who do you think Roman Reigns is going to set his eyes on first? Jacob Fatu, who took him out, or Solo, who's taken the tribal chief position? I think he can go either way. I really do. It just depends on, uh, you know, which way that... Uh, I guess it, it, it depends which way the GOAT feels. Either way, I, I, whether he goes with Jacob... That'll be good, you know what I mean. And whether he goes with Solo, we all not know that's going to be good. But I feel that uh, Jacob has momentum right now. Mm. Solo is a made guy already, and so with Jacob, he has momentum. But if we throw him right now to Roman, I feel we're rushing him. I I feel that Jacob should just 
terrorize, do regular TV matches with different talent. And just because Jacob has yet to show his wrestling ability. I mean, how, how much can you show just in a run-in? Right. But you imagine, just picture like Umanga mm -hmm. comes out. You remember that? And Umanga's just tearing people every Monday Night Raw, every mm -hmm. SmackDown. He's just running through people three minutes top. Well, that's what we need to see in Jacob. Yes, I feel we need to, you know, really brand him. I mean, he's branded. Hey, he does his, He did his branding on the independent circuit. All the fans that are happy for him, I guarantee you they're all independent fans that's been following his career. Yes, yes. Right? And it's mm -hmm. definitely not WWE Universe fans. Right. Right? And so he's got that going for him. But now the independent scenes, we want to see Jacob, what Jacob was known for on the independent scenes. <laughs> and so to give him that, we need to put him on TV matches. Give him like three, four minutes. You know, let's spice up. I think they can do better and with as far as his uh, intro. You know, it could be, we need something exactly what the bloodline is, dramatic. We need some, just, with this kid, if we're saying he's the best out, he, he needs it all. The entrance. Needs to come out like a... With a, a Bay Area rapper on his track. Well, or some just put... Just, for instance, you see, you know, the Wyatt family comes back out. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bo. Mm -hmm. You see how much energy they put into that. Like, you know, all the, you know, the, the entrance, the back scenes of theatrical movie type. We need that with this kid. We need his entrance, his vibe. We know he comes from bloodline, but we need to see why is this kid different? Why, why is he the child? Why is that? So the fans can understand if you show that theatrical movie, theatrical intro, there needs to be. And even with Jacob's outfit, yeah, the red and black, but Jacob needs to be in something that Jacob stands out. Like when you look at this kid through an action figure, you know exactly who that kid is, who that action figure is. And so, answer your question, I'd probably have Roman run with either Solo, because mm -hmm. Roman's probably going to run through... Tama and Tungaloa before he gets to Suge Knight of professional wrestling. <laughs> that's what he, that he definitely looks definitely like. Definitely got that swag going. He got that swag. He got that OG swag. He, he is in his gangster uh, lane man, for sure. He got that like that gangster lean swag. Oh yeah, and that's a beautiful thing how it looks. Sefa has his own look. Yep. Then Roman has his own look. That's the yep. tribal chiefs. Yep. You know, so it's good. And so I think you know he can run with uh, run through, you know. Uh, uh, Sefa Solo's uh, crew, and then finally get to to a Solo, and it needs to be something, you know, something whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I think that'll probably be a time that'd be good when Jacob is ready, because that angle between those two, you know, needs to come with an impact. Yep. Like he jumped, he jumped Roman. Okay. Well, what's special about that? Okay, we. Just seen Jacob just jump. What you know? What is special about that? What's what's? Did it capture the audience? Did it capture you know what it should be? Because mm -hmm. when Jacob does something to Roman, it should be able to be something to take him back out. Like pretty much, I beat you up so bad, it almost ends your career. Should have been an ambulance. Should have been something mm -hmm. where. You know, showing like going through like you know surgery or whatever. You know? Lincoln Continental. I say something. <laughs> You're right? pretty fast with that. So over it there, should brother. be something. I'm feeling. Yes, sir. Right? Because yeah, yeah. we need to be we need to be engaged into it. But you know, come out and uh, you know it, it was believable. Jacob, all Jacob stuff's believable. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's vicious. Looks good. But I just feel Jacob hasn't shown. 
to me and hasn't been booked to get his full potential of what the independent circuit sees what Jacob can really do. So in, in time. In, in due time. In due yep. time. Yes, sir. Um, so I think uh, we'll wrap this up. I have a, a question I've never asked you, but um, uh, I, I, th- I think it's relative uh, to this moment here and now. Um, I wanted to ask you, Big Quiche, if you could assemble a, a, a Samoan... Um, Oh my God! I'm drawing a blank. The the no 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 the the, the four the uh, the Mount Rushmore the Mount Mush Rushmore of Mount so, Rushmore yes sir of the Samo- Mount Rushmore. Rushmore of Samoan yeah, right. wrestlers. Have, a, have another shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, right. It could be past, current, present, future. Um, I'm. It's safe to say I'm gonna preach. I'm sure it's off and seek gonna gonna be up there. Yeah. So that leaves two spots open. But who would be on your Mount Rushmore? Of Samoan workers, uh, add those two. I'd have to man because I'm I'm not I'm not just saying this because I'm here in front of you, but I believe you're up there too. And then that that lat that that four spots could be between uh, Roman and The Rock, uh, because you can do two sets of the Mount Rushmore. But in in my Mount Rushmore, it'd be the two uncles, and it'd be Big Quiche or his well, brother. Uh, you know what? I I uh, because there's so many of us. And uh, I, I would number one eliminate myself out of that Mount Rushmore. I, you know, it's because who we are, you know, as uh, as a culture, and we know for personal reasons uh, who started it for all of us. Whether people feel the different careers were more up or more lower, but as far as you know, family wise, mm-hmm. I'd I'd have to go with uh, obviously Alfon Sika. High Chief Peter, Peter Maivia. Maivia, right? And you know the third one I would have to. Um, you know I would I have to throw in Uncle Haku. <laughs> yeah. You know we these uh, you know Uncle's not talked a lot about uh, to get his flowers, but he had so much to do with. You know, uh, opening up the door for Tongan Polynesians as well, and you know, riding, you know, traveling together with my uncles. You know, I like to add him as the fathers up in there because, sure. you know, he did a lot as well, and uh, you know, he was always, uh, you know, traveling a lot too with Uncle Alfon Sika back in the day, and you know, uh, King Curtis, who's another Hawaiian, Uncle Jimmy Superfly Snuka. And uh, when Uncle Rocky married into the family, Uncle Rocky. So, yeah, it's it's they would need to have more faces up on that Mount Rushmore. It should, you know, we'd have to have our own Mount Rushmore yes, to sir. really put in yep. a lot of the faces who we feel that that can be added there. But as far as the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably have to go with uh, no disrespect to any of the other OGs, but uh, you know, I had to go with Uncle Alpha Sika. Uncle Peter might be an uncle. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yep. That's one hell of a Mount Rushmore. Right. I don't think anyone could uh, argue against that. Big Quiche, uh, I know you're a busy man, so we're going to get you on out of here. Is there any final words you want to say? No, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And remember, it's free to be kind to one another. And always, always, Joey, smarten up. Give me a yeet. <laughs>